This is another one of the famous Watercolors Aquarium Gallery top five lists. This time we're talking about, well, it started out the top five most underrated aquarium fish, but we realized there's so many cool fish out there that are underrated. So we're just gonna go through elevator pitch style. We'll call them our top five. Our top yeah. five. We'll our top five this week. Yeah. Because there's favorite fish, new favorite fish all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're gonna bust through the elevator pitch of our top five underrated freshwater aquarium fish. Mm -hmm. Number one for me is the banded pygmy loach, Micro Nema Kylus Cruziatus. These are a really cool little schooling pygmy loach, an inch to an inch and a half long, a great addition to any nano fish tank. Okay, not any, but any fish tank that can handle another small school of fish. They're gonna stay down in the bottom half of the tank. They're an egg scatterer. They're supposed to be pretty easy to breed. There's my number one. My number one is kind of a deep cut, but I, they have a soft spot for me because they're a fish that I keep personally, and that's Pseudocalceus kybersi, or kybersis tetra. These guys kind of look like cool. mini, mini piranhas. They get about two inches long. They've got like these bright red polka dots, these purple sheen to them. They're, they're really beautiful and do better in smaller groups because they are a little bit territorial, but that makes their behavior really interesting. That's what the males would be in, that's coloration. Yes, yes. yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, Charles. So I put the Chokurei Daniel. Uh, not for me, it's just the ideal dinner fish. It's beautiful, it adds a lot of activity to the tank, and unlike most other Daniels, they're not prone to the same type of penis. <laughs> so I just don't know. Good, fast, spoon fish is a great color. Yeah, yeah. Good call, good call. My next one is the Kabotai Reservoir. Sticking with the small schooling fish scene. Any tank that can handle group of cardinal tetras because you're looking for that splash of blue. Mm -hmm. The Kabotai Resbora has got that splash of green. Brilliantly colored, almost electric, green colored Resbora. Peaceful, schooling, great fish. We try to keep those in stock, but when we have them in a group, they move too fast. Uh, my next one would be a fantastic combination with the those Resboras. Oh, fun. Uh, well, I wanted to say all Stipodons, but I'm going to go with the ornate Stipodon because I think that's my favorite. Ooh, Stipodon cool. or Novice. These are what I would consider to be a nano algae eater. They get about two inches long, they do eat some algae. They're not going to fully clean your tank for you, sorry, but they will pick at some algae all day. And they have beautiful colorations. They're peaceful with almost anything, um, and you don't have to keep them in groups, but you can. Don't forget that goofy goby personality. Oh, they're yeah. hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So if you want a two inch fish that is just going to crack you up all the time, then go for a second. Good call. Good call. <laughs> My next one is the Hexazona bar. This one left this Hexazona. If you want something with the personality of a cardinal tetra, but something a little bit more in size like a surpe, I think that's the way to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Peaceful, but can still hold their own. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent call. Good gorgeous. color. And gorgeous. All right, so we love our pistos around here. So a pisto, of course, had to be on my list. And for me, my favorite is the pisto kangaroo. Sometimes called the panda pisto. The males have that really cool little red edge on their tail. Really nice blue color. The females get that just intense yellow. And they can be a great addition to a lot of different community tanks. Anywhere you're going to use a ram, you can put a pisto a pair of pisto panduros. Sure, sure. Um, my next one, I'll go between you because we probably have your pisto next. <laughs> um, I have the Congo puffer. This is awesome. a smaller puffer. They only get to maybe about six inches, but they're ambush predators, so they're really not super active. Um, if you want to do a single puffer and you really can't do more than a 20 long or a 29, this is the one to go for. And they have a really great red coloration to them too, which is Beautiful and, and unique among other puffers. Body shape too, it, it's so different than what we traditionally think of as a puffer. Super fun. There's lots of good puffer I personnel. really like it. Definitely this. a species tank, but still yeah. very cool fish. Mm -hmm. So my Episto no, of course, <laughs> is the Episto-Grama Nice. Um, they are just my favorite Episto because that profile is just so distinctive. Like across the room, you're not going to mistake it for any other Episto. Just yeah. because of that space, yeah, yeah. space tail. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. So, if you want a Mephisto and you want the Agatha Jack, come fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> and they can handle a lot of water, no problem. No problem. Yeah. People need to not be afraid of Mephistos living in Mother Michigan. Yes, there are some you have to mess with the water, but many of them are just Mother Michigan. Yeah. 
My next fish, speaking of dwarf cichlids, I'm sticking with that theme for just a minute longer. The whole genus, yes, I cheated. The whole <laughs> genus Nanocromus. Yeah. That's the group of West African dwarf species. They're sort of the epistos of the Congo region. Great in pairs, great little personalities, a great addition to a tank like this. Um, they love plants, they don't hurt them. They're really not going to mess with school and fish that stay out of the territory. So I'm going to just cheat and say the whole man of needs to be better. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. But if you're going to say that, then I should just say all buffalo heads. Because <laughs> I was going to just stick to Cassiarius as the one that I keep. But super hilarious personalities, similar to goby personalities, and they have that sort of underdeveloped swim bladder like gobies do. Um, really interesting behaviors. In, an, in a planted tank, that's where they're the most bold, I believe, because they've got really good cover. They want to hide if they can. And that limits their aggression a little bit, too. They will pick at plants a little bit, but don't tend to eat plants. They just mainly eat dead leaves. Really interesting pair behaviors. They're a true, like, bonded pair that stick together and work together. So that's something that you should try if you've got robust fish in your tank and you're looking for a cichlid and maybe something that's a little bit more bold, a little bit bigger than an episto. And you need, I kept those years ago. They were so cool. Just a blast. Like, I can only describe them as like goofballs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just the, watching them make problems and then try to solve them is yeah. so right. fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. They're almost like you're going to describe a fish as like emotive. <laughs> yeah, that's choice. I like it. All right. Yeah. So my next one is uh, Nothobranchius uh, Eggerjai. Well done. Uh, uh, did the killers. A lot of people would say that uh, Nothobranchius Rabokai is like the most beautiful. Rokokia, yes. Rokokia yep. is the most beautiful freshwater fish. I just like the Eggerjais better. I don't have any particular reason yeah. to, I just do. That whole genus is so hardy. It, they're all stupidly hardy, but they're all gorgeous. Yes. Absolutely. And contrary, one of the big myths out there is that Nova Brunchus Achilles only lives for a year. In the wild, that tends to be true because the pond dries up. If your aquarium doesn't dry up, they're going to live for a lot longer than a year. <laughs> yeah, if your aquarium dries up, they probably died a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere you can keep it better, splendid. Yep. You could keep an open as long as it's tightly covered because they're incredible jumpers. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that in most cases that someone would want to keep a bet a note to rank this pair is probably a better fit for the type of sure. tank you actually want. Yeah, yeah. excellent <laughs> choice. All right, I'm sticking with the theme. You knew what had to happen. The clown killy fish. <laughs> yeah. My all-time favorite fish. Definitely makes my top five underrated fish. We've got a tank here, uh, one of our cubes, planted tank with a huge group of them. Killy fish are typically thought of as a pair or a trio fish. This is a group of about 25 or 30 or as many as we could jam in there. <laughs> they do want a little bit more of a peaceful tank, but with some, some smaller schooling gentle fish, they're going to be just fine. They adapt to flake food wonderfully, they adapt to our water conditions wonderfully, and that rocket tail, I love them. They're my favorite. Yeah, we've got a species profile out on that one, so if you really want to see us get into clown killies, then that's where we're doing that. But, I mean, at some point, we're just going to have to get into all killies, right? That's, <laughs> that's, sure. that's got to be coming up pretty soon. Yeah. All right, well, my uh, final one, as uh, is another common name, ornate bushfish. You can see where my face is. I've got two ornates on my list. Right. <laughs> uh, this is Microtonicoma and Sorgii. These are the, the bushfish, or the Microtonicoma and the Tenopoma, are related to Garamis, related to Bettas. This genus are the smaller of the Tenopomas, um, and the and Sorgii is, is the smaller one of them. So they only get to about two inches, but they've got really vibrant and distinct black and red bands that are just absolutely Stunning, especially when the males are in their breeding mode and just really trying to show off. There's not too much that looks like them, and that's just what they look like wild. The so they do color down when they're stressed, but most of the time you can see those distinct bands. Those bands are cool. That's a very cool fish. We need to have more of those. Yeah, we have them in right now, and I just I keep checking on them like, oh, those are so cool. I don't have any room for that. <laughs> It's not a fish that I would keep myself, but every time I walk by them, I'm like, yeah, oh, there's nothing cool. that yeah. looks like that. Yeah. It, they're so... You do a double boy. take. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your last one, Charles? Uh, my last one is, I basically said every wild feta species. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had to pick one, I would probably go with uh, feta ocelata. That's just the one that 
it kind of started it all. Mike Pelway wrote an article about it, and I was like, wait, there are like 80 species of bed? <laughs> and they're all stupidly easy to keep. You can keep them in a, no species you can keep in a community. Like we have a bed at Elder Marsh with hair in there right now with a group of reservoirs and zero problems. Zero. We've got a Unimaculata in this sink right here. Yeah. 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 Um, I still have to imagine with my buffalo heads. Yeah, that yeah. was great. I saw this was my first wild set that as well. And a lot of people don't think of that as, as a community fish, but the they're wild not room for aggression. <laughs> yeah, the wild ones, they're with 80 species. Most can accommodate a betta if you want to at least one. And the Ocelotus is a really cool mouth bird. Yeah. 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 Super cool fish. Well, there you have it. There's our top five underrated fish. Come see us at Watercolors and look for more underrated fish YouTube videos. We're going to have to do this one again because yeah. it was really hard for me to narrow this we down. We have so too many. So right. let us know what yours are in the comments. Let us know which fish you'd like us to talk about. And don't forget to like and subscribe our videos and just keep up to date with what we're doing around the shop. We've got a lot of exciting things going on. And in the meantime, have lots of fun and keep those hands wet. Thanks.